pussybubble.com. Page 5, Bursting the Pussy Bubble, Pussy Power, and Women's Suffrage. And we have here an illustration of Christ, like a big umbrella, covering the husband, covering the wife. And a quote from Reverend Professor H.M. Goodwin in the New Englander and Yale Review. With the prevalence of women's suffrage, a new power will be introduced into politics, and its character and results will be vastly different from what its advocates imagine. With the better class of women refusing to vote, and the lower, the corrupt, and venal class swarming to swell the majority of their favorites or their patrons, politics, instead of being purified, will become tenfold more corrupt by the corruption added to it of this new, <clears throat> excuse me, of this new element. And another quote, quote from Susan Fenimore Cooper, that's right, the daughter of the first uh, noted American novelist, James Fenimore Cooper, author of Last of the Mohicans. She was an anti-suffrage anti activist, pardon me, and she says, as for those who have a living belief in the doctrines of Christianity, when they find that revealed religion, from the first of the prophets to the last of the apostles, allots a subordinate position to the wife, they are compelled to believe Moses and St. Paul in the right, and the philosophers of the present day, whether male or female, in the wrong. End quote. It is no exaggeration to say that the most radical of the anti-suffrage activists and theologians never anticipated the satanic degree to which their worst apprehensions would be realized in the United States and the Western world. For in acquiescing to the demands of the suffragettes with the ratification of the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, the USA declared open war on God's law, reversing the Creator's decree in the Garden of Eden Quote, he shall rule over thee, and setting in motion the process of rebellion that would inevitably culminate in the largest genocide in recorded history, the global abortion holocaust, the cultural normalization of contraception, the cultural normalization of sodomy and, quote, same-sex marriage, and ultimately the creation of the economic and demographic Armageddon, that is, the pussy bubble. If women's suffrage had had any other goal than the annihilation of the patriarchal order, additional votes might have been given to the head of the household, be he brother, or father, or son, or even pastor, to represent the adult women in his family. Instead, the egalitarian ideal dictated a reality in which the wife, the sister, or the daughter was empowered to nullify the man's vote at whim, through the secret ballot, and nullify God's decree, underscored by Moses and the apostles, that he shall rule. He shall rule. Now the state has only one power, violence and the threat of violence. In granting women equal control in the exercise of state violence, patriarchy was not actually abolished. Instead, the balance of power in Western civilization shifted from the head of the family to the head of the state. The vast numbers of men in the American incarceration system on domestic violence charges bears witness to this phenomenon. Gone is the colloquial rule of thumb. Politicians, bureaucrats, and their minions in the increasingly militarized police state are the new patriarch, the de facto and de jure husband. The American pussies have been incorporated into their harem and the man, like a breeder slave in the antebellum South, is, in terms of his legal rights, at best an item of tangible, movable property, a chattel stud. This in no instance is in no instance more evident than the, in the legalization of abortion. The American pussy may, at whim, declare the fetus in her womb a legal person or a legal non-person. If the fetus is killed without her consent, the killer may be charged with some form of homicide, and in many instances she may exercise lethal force in the defense of the fetus as a legally recognized person, for instance in Oklahoma. But her subjective decree of non-personhood at any stage of gestation authorizes her 
to kill the fetus for any reason or none at all without any appeal to her husband or father. The American pussy is in a very real sense a goddess of the highest order with the entire police state standing ready to enforce with unequivocal violence her divine right to create or uncreate a person. Ad nihilo. Great indeed is Diana of the Ephesians.